In this video, we are going to go over one of the most infamous series of battle mechs in the history of Battletech, and one which is often ridiculed both in-universe and without. The mech we are going to be covering today is the Charger. An assault mech weighing in at 80 tons, the Charger was originally designed by Wells Technologies and began production in 2665. The design was criticized severely when it began production, and over 1,000 units would be built and sold by Wells during the production run of this assault mech. The design itself was considered poor enough that even prior to the Succession Wars, the Star League Defense Force had ended all purchases of the Charger prior to its collapse. Viewing the unit as being uncompetitive even as a training mech, Wells had stockpiled too many units, falsely believing that the SLDF would continue to purchase it with any kind of frequency. It was only the Succession Wars that ironically saved the Charger, led by a desperate attempt by the Traconis Combine to purchase anything that even looked like a battle mech. By the end of the Third Succession War, approximately 500 of these units remained of the original batch which they'd constructed. They would continue to produce them throughout the Succession Wars, but Wells was bought out by Luthien Armor Works, largely due to them being involved in a scandal exporting Charger components through the black market to support other houses with equipment. All production would cease on this unit as of 3030. Mech warriors, particularly in the DCMS, considered it to be a punishment to be assigned to one of these vehicles. Originally, it was envisioned as being a heavy scout, something that could move fast but still take fire, before exfiltrating itself from the situation it was in. The Charger, in its original version, the CGR-1A1, failed to deliver as a scout mech and would fail at almost every job it was given afterwards. Close combat is the only functional means of harming other targets, in essence. The unit was built around the heaviest, largest engine ever produced for a normal-sized battle mech, that being the standard LTV-400 engine, which weighs 52.5 tons. This engine provides the Charger with a running speed of 86 kilometers per hour, which also gives it 8 movement points in-game, and though this is impressive for an 80-ton battle mech, it comes at the expense of everything else. It would only have, as a primary armament, five small lasers. Not only providing it with insufficient damage, but with laughable range. In addition, the unit possesses, for its defense, ten tons of armor, which is substandard for a mech in its weight class. From a gameplay standpoint, and from an in-world standpoint, the standard Charger is arguably the worst mech ever designed that was produced in any significant capacity. It's big, moderately fast, and outperformed in almost every respect by better mechs, and mechs which weigh less. For instance, a Wolverine has the same armor, can jump, and outguns it, and weighs 25 tons less and costs significantly fewer sea bills. To call the Charger a failure, is an insult to all other failures by placing them in the same field as them. The scale of this mech's inability, especially for the money, is catastrophic. Some factions would attempt to gain usage out of it during the Succession Wars, and it would see a rebirth once the late generation Star League era technology began to become increasingly available. Even the Draconis Combine would resume production and utilize its chassis design for other mechs once this became available. Notably, the Capellan Confederation would create the CRG-1A5 during the later Succession Wars and the War of 3039, stripping out the 400 standard engine for the 320 standard engine, reducing its speed while using the saved weight to install a massive AC-20 autocannon and twin SRM-6 racks as well as a medium laser. This configuration was only normally seen in House Liao, and was an uncommon sight at that. Liao did not produce these models domestically and had bought them from the Draconis Combine, with each one of them being a retrofit, the cost in sea bills was great, but this was largely because the Capellan Confederation had very limited ability to build their own domestic assault max. Much later, and first produced in 3049, 
just in time for the clan invasion, the Charger, with the benefit of rediscovered technology, was able to finally fulfill some of its original role in an adequate sense. This new series would be classified as the CRG-3K. The Draconis Combine would install a 400XL engine into the chassis, saving significant weight. It would then install an LRM-20 for long-range fire, as well as four medium-pulse lasers, giving it significant teeth in close, especially in comparison to before. Jump jets were applied to the design, allowing it to leap up to 150 meters. Its defensive capabilities were also bolstered by feral fibrous armor. Though there would be numerous additional attempts to make the Charger's design more acceptable, they were all attempts to find value in a machine through other means. Some will add things like swords, while others will try to refine the autocannon variant in a new age. But despite this, all of them still have the burden of being based on the original design. The primary strength of the original design doesn't exist. Of its offshoots, the primary benefit is either abandoning its recon role entirely, or by using advanced technology in an attempt to triage it, while still being forced to compete with superior clan mechs or other more heavily armed inner sphere ones. Its weaknesses are legion. Even in its most refined roles, such as the 3K or its offshoots, it's far from an ideal design. It's simply been made more workable. The Charger was a bold attempt to break the mold of what is expected of a recon and assault mech. Bold doesn't always equate to good, however. Thank you for joining me here today. If you enjoyed this video, please consider liking it and subscribing to the channel. With that, I'll catch you in the comments section below.